And he could enter into a conversation with Abraham. And Abraham tried to plead on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah, but the disobedience of Sodom and Gomorrah had become so grievous before God that God had no eternity but to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah with fire. So disobedience brings destruction. Disobedience stops ones from going to heaven. Now, I know many of times we, we go to funerals, and when you go to a funeral, you, you will hear the preacher uh, talking some very nice and beautiful things about the person that have died, and, and they will say it all the best thing they have to say, but it does not give them access to heaven. You could pour oil on the coffin, you could speak in tongues, you could prophesy. That does not give them uh, access to internal life. If that person was living on this earth and were walking in disobedience to the word of God, they are not going to heaven no matter how hard the church may try to, to make it look beautiful and painted. We will just be trying to make you feel satisfied in your heart. But in other words, the Bible says that if you walk in the spirit of disobedience, you become separated from God. Look at Adam and Eve. That he created in his image and in his likeness. And the Bible says that in the cool of the day, God went down and, and had fellowship with Adam and Eve. Imagine you in your house and God coming down to you. He's coming down to your level. But this point in time, Adam and Eve have, have disobeyed and, and, and walked in the spirit of disobedience. And this time God comes, he stopped halfway. He always came and met them and the fellowship. But this time around when he comes, he stops halfway. Why? Because he finds Adam and Eve in the wrong place. Disobedience to the word of God puts you in the wrong place. Disobedience to the word of God stops his presence from coming upon your life. Disobedience to the word of God prevents you from having fellowship with God. Disobedience to the word of God stops the spirit of God from manifesting in and through your life. Disobedience to the word of God does not give you access to heaven. The new God. And have fellowship with him. But this time around, he's calling Adam. Adam, where are you? He said, I'm here, Lord, but I am naked. God could be calling some of us this morning. And, and, and saying to you, Jacob, where are you? you? You used to be doing what I wanted you to do, but where are you this morning? Uh, De De Deborah, where are you this morning? Uh, Adam, where are you this morning? Sarah, where are you this morning? I, I have fellowship with you. We had a relationship. But you have stepped out of the place of, in the place of discipline. Where are you? Come back to me, my son and my daughter. That's what Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 would say. Come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins may be red as scarlet, I, I want to make them white as snow. Come, come, let us, let us reason together. Come, let us, come, let us reason together. Listen, gentlemen, when you are alive, you have the perfect opportunity to make use of the time that you have. To serve him. To worship him. How would God come this time and call Adam? And Adam said, I'm, I'm here, Lord, but I'm naked. This is what disobedience does. It nakes you of the presence and glory of God. It makes you to be vulnerable to the devil. So the Bible said when one demon is cast out, that demon goes roaming around. And the reason why the demon goes roaming around because the demon is looking for vacancy in the life of an individual where he can come and stay. But this time around, that demon does not come by himself. The Bible says he goes and gets back 
send more stronger demons like him and they come to stay. So sometimes somebody says, I tried to break this habit, but I can't break this habit. It's because you walk in the place of disobedience and there are some spirit that have come to possess you and you're doing things that you don't know exactly why you are doing this thing because you have stepped in the place of disobedience and God has left you all by yourself. You got to come back home. You got to come back to the throne of grace. You got to come back to the throne of mercy. You got to come back, come back, come back, come back, come back to the place of worship. Come back to the word of God. Come back. Come back. Listen to me. There's a big difference when you read the Bible on the tablet and when you literally hold you're going to scan that borrow your Bible. When you literally go through the book and you read the pages of this word, there's a big difference. You'll come to realize the one that you are reading from the computer, the kind of insight that you will get when you're reading this word is, is different. That's why they call us the Christian, the people of the book. You got to have a Bible. Many of us right now, we, 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 we just run after the digital stuff and we forget to know the holy book, the holy word of God that we need this book. You see, that's what the Bible says we should be able to, 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 to teach our sons and daughters. Not only that, but he said you should tie it around their neck. That they will be able to meditate upon it day and night. There is something special about the word of God. When you read this word, you see yourself in this word as a mirror. This word is able to rebuke you, to chastise you, to fill you, to open your eyes that you can see things from a different perspective. You got to be a lover of the word of God and a lover of the book. This book has life. This book has transformation. Somebody said, come back to the book. Many of us come to church with all our Bibles and we just got it on our phone. So we, boom, hold on. We read, we close it. We're not opening it again until next week, Sunday, when pastor said, let's go to Matthew or to James. We open it and after that, we close it. Somebody said obedience. Somebody said obedience. Somebody said obedience. Thank you, Jesus. So see, God is a God of principle. He will not violate his principles to bless us. In other words, God will not refuse for his word to come to pass because he wants to bless us. Look, look, look at the man called Samuel. He is not in the lineage of the kings. He's come from a different background. But God gave him the opportunity to become king over Israel. And God instructed him, when you go against the city of Ard, I warn you to kill the king. Kill everything in that city. No human beings you live, no beast, no animal, nothing. Kill everything. So somebody said, ah. How will God tell this man to go and fight against another city, capture the city, and kill everything? The reason why God has instructed him to do so, because the people were in disobedience to the word of God. So Samuel goes in, and he gets dead and overthrow the city, captured everybody. Uh, why why we? We were getting ready this morning, and something just said, just look on Facebook. And then when I, when I looked, the first thing I, I saw that drew my attention was Guinea Conakry. That the president this morning was overthrown. He was captured by the, by the, the soldiers. They took him from the presidential palace, put him in the car, and whatever they took him, another military man spoke up and put the constitution and said, we will come back to the constitution, but for now, we are in charge X, Y, and Z. So, 
On Friday, he was still the president. Saturday, he was still the president. This morning, some soldiers came together, just went and overthrew him and took over. And the thing that comes to my mind, we are in 2021. And we're still having coups around Africa. We're still having people rising up in Haiti and killing the president. In 2021. We're not in 1980 or 1984 or April 6th. No, no. We are in 2021. And these things are still happening around us. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go back to the book of Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24 will tell you nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. These are signs for the end time. So in other words, what the Bible is telling us that we need to put our life right and put ourselves right and walk in obedience to the word of God because the end will surely come. And when I saw him sitting down without anything on his feet, his shirt wide open, his legs up, his, the thing that ran to my mind, that I know he's thinking, I wish I didn't change the constitution to go for a third term in power. Greed. 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 Blinding the mind and hardens the heart. Greed causes one to turn their back on God. I, I, I want to keep gathering for myself. I, I want to keep collecting for myself. So I, I, I put God on the back burner. I, I, I refuse to obey the voice that, that said in Hebrews chapter. 10, 25, not forsaking yourselves as other do, but you should be able to go to the place of worship. Coming together to worship is different. It's very different from you going on YouTube and watching Facebook Live. It's, it's different. It's different. It's different. I got tons of DVDs at home from TDJX ministry, but the experience whenever I go to Men Power, go to the pastor conference, is different from what I watch on the television. You got to understand that God wants to make a personal contact with you. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. So you got to make yourself available to step in the presence of the God. In the presence of the Lord, you got to make yourself available. So the Bible says that we need to surrender ourselves to God. We need, we need to put him first. That's why you see yet in, in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 1, it says that, that you must, you must, you must the Lord God and keep his commandment, take his charge, keep his statute, his judgment, and follow after them always. Somebody say always. Greed is bad. Imagine you having 50 pairs of shoes. But you walk into Macy's, you say one more. Uh huh. You, 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 you got so many suits, and some of those suits, you can't even wear them. But you, when you go into the store, you, you stay one more. The, the flesh, this is, this is the work and manifestation of the flesh. The flesh always won. So you go to Ezekiel chapter 14, you will see what happens to Satan and why he fell. He said, and I will exalt my throne. Above the throne of the Most High. And I will be like God. In other words, he wanted to take the place of God. You as a Christian must be able to die to self. Die to the works of the flesh. Die to the spirit of disobedience. And give yourself to God so that God alone can be glorified in and through your life. So in 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 22. The prophet Samuel goes to Saul. They understood the pattern. There are certain things the king could not do until the prophet came in. So after he's gone and captured the city out and did what God told him not to do, he killed some of the people and then he kept certain people alive. He killed some of the animals. And then he kept setting an animals alive. When Samuel got to the scene, the prophet said to him, 
What is this blinking them hearing in my ears? The prophet was not there when he made the decision not to obey God. But when the prophet shows up, he said, what is the sound of the animals that I'm hearing in my ears? And he says to him, look at verse 22 in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. And Samuel said that the Lord has said, great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hike him than the fat rams. In other words, the prophet was telling him, for obedience is better than sacrifice. He said, I have done all that God has asked me to do. But then Samuel said, what is this noise of animals that I'm hearing in my ear? Didn't God instruct you? Didn't God say, kill all the people and kill all the animals? He said, no, I, I kept the best animal. I kept the fat animal. I kept the, the animal that was looking good. And, and I kept the king uh, to, be, to be able to sacrifice them. He said, no, God does not just desire in sacrifice. That is not the only thing that moved the heart of God. What pleases God is obedient for obedience is better than sacrifice. Your obedience to God is better than sacrifice. Your obedience to God is better than sacrifice. Your obedience to God is better than sacrifice. Your obedience to the word of God is better than sacrifice. So in 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 23, the Bible says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Disobedient to God is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and error because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected thee from being king. It was God that established him as king. But on the same God is saying, because you rejected my voice and rejected to, to subject yourself to my obedience today, I reject you from being king over Israel. And from this chapter, his reign over Israel comes to an end. The same God that lifted him up, when he got up and refused to continue to admonish this same God, God said, now I lifted you up and you are turning your back on me. I also turn my back on you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Imagine all the prayers that you pray. God, uh, you just open this door for me. God, just bless me. God, just take me to America. God, just answer my prayer. When you come to this nation and you turn your back on God, God will also turn his back on you. Because when you look in Deuteronomy chapter 11, he said the place that I have told you to, don't follow these gods. Because they have not known you and they have done nothing for you. I, the one that have chosen you. I, the one that have known you. I, the one that have identified myself with you. So, obey my voice. Somebody say obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Look at Exodus chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. In Exodus chapter 19, let's, let's, let's go back, look at verse 6. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. And then, yea, shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. God said, we 
are to be unto him a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. Moses did his responsibility. He went to them and told them exactly what the Lord has said. Look at the people's response in verse 8. Exodus chapter 19, verse 8. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 19, verse 8. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. He comes and gave them the commandments of God. He gave them the word of God. And the people decided, all that God has said to us, we are willing to do. No wonder why the Bible says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat what the fruit of the land. So Moses takes back the people's word he took it back to God as a ball. Whenever you lift up your voice and make a commitment, that commitment you make before God is a ball. And God expects you to be faithful to the commitment that you have made. Moses knew that we're not talking to him. They were making that commitment to God. So the Bible says he takes their word back to God. God, this is what they have said. In other words, Lord, it's between you and them. I step outside of the picture. Oh, hallelujah. This morning I'm saying to you, every word that you have said to God, God is expecting you to honor your commitment. Because you see, they're where the blessing flows. We got to be willing to subject yourself to the will of God. Follow his precepts, follow his word, follow his commandments. And he took the people's word back to the Lord. Why? Because Moses knew. That God will hold them accountable. Who told you God don't know your address? Who told you he don't even know where you sleep? Who told you that he don't know the thoughts that run through your mind? So, sometimes we think we're more intelligent than God. You know, that, that, that's, that's why King did. King said, you know what? God himself, you make a sacrifice. He didn't know that God was not looking at the sacrifice. What God was interested in was his obedience. I said to you earlier in the beginning of this message that partial obedience is disobedience. He, he said, you know what? I'll just go to the field and I'll collect some quick common and I will collect some tomatoes. I will pick up some grapes here and then I will take some watermelon and I will, and then, and, and I, 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 will, I will pick up some oranges from this side. Whatever it is, I will just put it together and I will just put it on the altar before God and say, you asked me to bring a sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did not realize that God's eyes were not on the sacrifice. The eyes were God was on the obedience. The same applied to us today. After you work one week and you get your paycheck or you work two weeks and you get your paycheck and you are not able to honor God with your tithes and offering. You are lacking. The money becomes too important for God. It becomes too plenty for God. It becomes too valuable for God. And you gave him those grapes 
that the animals and the insects have already bitten. And you bring before him the, 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 the quick come on that, that the worm have already eaten some part of. And, and you bring him one sheep that, that is hopping and the sheep is hopping. Can't walk straight. And you know you can't eat that kind of sheep. But you bring that kind of sheep and, and you open it before God and you expect the blessings to come. He said, obedient is better than sacrifice. I am not looking at your sacrifice. I'm interested in your obedience. Obedient hurts because it's, it puts you to the place where you deprive the flesh from having its will. Hmm. She read a scripture from Exodus in our Thanksgiving service. And the scripture says, and Moses people told the people, stop bringing your savor and your goal because we got enough. The people had to be willing to obey. It, it was a hard thing for Abel to look upon his flock and think the best. But he realized that the blessing came from God. And if the blessing comes from God, there is nothing that God can give you that you cannot get back to him. So even though his flesh was saying, you know what, you can, you can make some good um, pepper soup and you can cook some good uh, top of ghee, or you can, you can fit some good sushi and, and you, you can have a delicious meal to eat after. But he chose that we offer God first. I will give God my best. Even though my flesh is requesting for this thing, but I, I will offer God this thing first. I had a, a brief window, I believe, with less like one minute, looking at one of my spiritual fathers on Facebook Live this morning, and last week Sunday they had a groundbreaking ceremony. And he was giving the church back a report of the groundbreaking ceremony last week. In one of the reports, in a report, one of the things he said, there were five individuals, five families that decided because they want to see this building built, each of them would give 50000 as their contribution towards the building. Another group said, we'll give 25000 Another group came and said, we'll give 10000 for the building to be built. And his wife said, it is not for us. But after this building is built, missionaries will come from here and go back into the world to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to all nations. Those people got these, yes. But they are making a sacrifice to honor God, to obey God. What sacrifice will you make when it comes to obedience? Abel chose. See, it has to be a personal decision. It has to be a personal decision. It has to be a personal decision. No wonder why the Bible says a husband and wife will be lying down in bed. And within the twinkle of an eye, one will be taken and the other one will be left. And when the man look around, his wife is gone and maybe he thinks that she went to the bathroom when he runs and says, honey, she's not in the bathroom. She has gone to glory. He said, two will be working in the field. And while they are working in the field, one will be taken and another one will be left. If you are flying that time and the, and the potter is already saved and born again, that one is up to you because the potter will be taken and the plane going the way they need to go because it's time for him to meet his master. If you are in the bus and on the train, that person will be able to leave. You got to surrender yourself to Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Where will you be when the trumpet shall have sound? My brothers and sisters, I call you this morning 
to the place of obedience. To obey God and, and follow after his precepts with all of your heart. Abel make a decision that he would give God his best. Even if it hurts, he would give God his best. Even if other people were considering him to be a fool and would mock him, he would still God give God his best. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I pray that every man, every woman, every boy and girl in this house, part of Global Impact Ministries International, will walk in the spirit of obedience and obey God come what may. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Before we come to the Lord's table, the Bible has asked us to examine ourselves and repent of any sin there be in our lives. Every eye closed. Every eye closed. Talk to him this morning. Repent of every disobedience in your life. Repent of everything that does not honor the name of the Lord. Give yourself to Jesus this morning. And let him be glorified. Let him be glorified. Let him be glorified. Let him be glorified. Lord, I want to do your will. I want to please you. Psalm 84 verse 10 says, For a day in that coast is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to do all in the tents of wickedness. Lord, we want to be doorkeepers in your house. We want to follow you. We want, we want to serve you. We want to obey you. We pray for the spirit of obedience to rise up in us. Thank you, Jesus. Though we stay in the gap this morning to ask for your mercy and forgiveness for that brother, for that sister, for that boy, for that girl. You said if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from every act of unrighteousness. We pray this morning, God, that you blot out our transgression, our iniquity. Lord, we pray this morning in the name of Jesus that you will cleanse us by the power of the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for, for these elements. We, we ask this morning that you will sanctify the bread and you will sanctify the wine. As we partake of it, oh God, let it make us whole again. Spirit of the living God, we gave ourselves to you this morning. We ask, oh God, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit. Everything in us that wants us to walk contrary to the word of God, we pray that that thing must die this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Heal us. Mold us again. In your name we pray with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Remain standing as the deaconess goes. The Lord's mm -hmm. Supper. Just remain, just remain standing as you are. You are served. What a glory shares on our way. What we do, what we do is good. He abides with us still.
disciples he took the bread and he broke it he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me we partake of the bread together after the same man and also he took the cup and he has subset Cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, the Lord's death till he come. Will we partake of the cup together? Never. The blood of Jesus will never lose its power. No, will never lose its power. The blood of Jesus will never lose its power. No, never, no, never. The blood of Jesus will never lose its power. Let us pray. Make a decision today to obey God in totality, mm. to obey His word, to bring yourself in subjection to the will and the word of God. Father, we come to you this hour asking for your help we pray God that your mercies will come upon us every man every woman every boy and every girl Lord we want to follow your examples follow your word we pray as we have begun this series on obedience there it will cause something to arise in us. Now each and every one of us will make a decision to follow you and obey your commandments. We ask this morning for your grace and your mercy. We pray for those brothers and sisters that could not make it, that could not come. But Lord, we ask so God in as they follow this message and follow the service by YouTube and Facebook. God, that your grace will be sufficient for them. We pray this morning, God, I you restored unto them the joy of your salvation. And a God, you renew it within them. 
a new heart and a right attitude. We ask this week, God, that your blessings will come upon us, that doors will be open unto us. We pray this week that we step into our season of divine speed. We pray and declare, God, that you'll do something good, something wonderful, something great, something awesome on behalf of your sons and your daughters. God, we bless you. Be glorified. Thank you. In your name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, Men, please don't leave. Please meet your president. Men, please don't leave. Please meet your president. Music, ministry. I will meet with